This is David Clark, the People's Sheriff, on the Blaze Radio Network. Folks, it is time for a citizen-led revolution in the United States of America. Welcome to the program. Another one of our finest, Harris County's finest, Texas Sheriff's Deputy, Darren Goforth, killed by a black man while he was simply filling his cruiser up with fuel. An unthinkable attack, at least it was at one time, unthinkable in this country. I mean, law enforcement officers are killed in the line of duty every year. Usually they're in some sort of interaction, responding to a call for service, a fight with a suspect, chasing suspects, but not while just simply at a fuel station, a gas station, filling the gas tank up. But it's not unthinkable anymore. I thought that back in December of 2014, when two of New York's finest officers, Wenzhen Liu and Rafael Ramos, sitting in their cruiser, New York City, gunned down again by a black suspect. No, the media won't run those headlines. Black suspect murders law enforcement officers, black black suspect murders defenseless folks, defenseless. When it happens the other way, in a, what we call lawful intervention, a law enforcement officer fighting with a suspect, pursuing a suspect, has to use force or deadly force to protect their life or the lives of somebody else, the life of somebody else. The headline is what? White officer shoots unarmed black man. I'm getting sick of the liberal mainstream media with that narrative. That is done to incite and inflame this new movement of slime moving through our society under the banner of black activism. These aren't activists. This is slime. These people are garbage. They're filth. They're subhuman. They're an embarrassment to humankind. They're an embarrassment to the black race. That isn't activism. That's the devil's work. So now we lost another law enforcement officer. By the way, three in the last seven days. I've had it. The gloves are off. No more diplomacy. No more diplomatic conversation about this because it's getting worse. The killing of Deputy Goforth was an assault on the American way of life. It was an assault on our system of justice. It was an assault on the rule of Law. Law enforcement officers in this country uphold and protect the rule of law. The rule of law is the bedrock of our democracy. Without the rule of law, you have nothing. That is what's under assault. That is what I said 
in the days following the Ferguson riots that long ago. I know it's in vogue now. People are starting to wake up now. At least some of you are. Our political class isn't. I'll get to that in a minute. This is an anarchist movement. I said it back then and people laugh. Well, it's hyperbole. Well, it's a little over the top. Well, no, these are peaceful protesters. And they enjoy protection of the First Amendment. Peaceful protests, we're told. We had that used against us as a ruse. This is not a peaceful protest. It's never been about peaceful protest. This has been about bringing down this country, weakening the rule of law, the hallmark of our American society. You do not have First Amendment protection to riot. You do not have First Amendment protection to make death threats against anybody, much less law enforcement officers. That is not First Amendment protected. But here's another thing that we too often forget. The First Amendment contained in the Bill of Rights restricts government restricts what government can do to free speech. It does not protect you or prevent you, I should say. It doesn't pre prevent you from going out and standing up for your principles and fighting back. The Constitution limits government's ability to do that to us. So when some clown is standing out in some square with some sign, kill the pigs, death to cops, that's not First Amendment protection. It might be from the government, but it's not from you and I. And you and I have just as much right to counter that to go out to where they're protesting with our signs and with our voices and with our torches and pitchforks and tell them to go to hell. Go back to the sewers that you came from. We know that President Barack Obama breathed life into your movement with his inflammatory rhetoric about our nation's finest after the Ferguson riots and Eric Holder. We're going to give you, in your slimy movement, a proper burial. Yes, you are black. Slime is what you are. And don't tell me I can't say that. This is what you have to say to them. They're going to, oh, you're racist. Folks, stop running from that. I am tired of the left dictating the pace, telling us, What words we can use in our discourse. What it's okay to say and how it's okay to say it. The day's over. Because the left knows if you control the language, you can control the debate. This is black slime and call them that. You are black slime. And if it's white anarchists, say you are white trash. You people have no place in our American culture, and there's no place for you in our American society. We need a citizen-led revolt. We must confront and engage this movement. It is dangerous, and they are winning. You're listening to David Clark, the People's Sheriff, on the Blaze Radio Network. Buck Sexton. So when someone shows you their right hand or they shake your right hand, it has to do with showing that they're not a threat. This can be taken back all the way to uh, Ehud in the Book of Judges, who assassinated the Moabite King Eglon. He was left-handed, and therefore he was able to hide a short sword on his right thigh. They didn't check that thigh when he went to see the king, and so left-handedness has been considered, and of the left, of course, has been considered sort of sinister, which in Latin literally means left. Buck Sexton. Weekdays, noon to 2 p.m. Eastern, on the Blaze Radio...
the Blaze Radio Network On Demand. David Clark, the People's Sheriff. Now, I said I'd talk about the political class. They're not helping in this situation. As our country burns, as it falls apart, we're no longer a constitutional republic. I don't know what we are right now. We have a president of the United States who thumbs his nose at the Constitution. We have a Congress who won't do anything to stop them in spite of their promise. John Boehner and Mitch McConnell, if you give us complete control of the United States Congress, we will stop Obama in his lawlessness. And they turned around and funded Obama's executive amnesty, which is unlawful. So then we have this Black Lies movement. And the politicians are afraid. They do not want to engage these individuals. And then when they do, they come out with this mealy mouth. Oh, well, you know, they need to be heard and they have some uh, concerns that need to be addressed. No, they don't. They need to be told to shut up, join the mainstream, work hard, take responsibility for your own actions, learn to overcome failure or how to overcome learn how to overcome obstacles pray and wait your chance what do i mean by wait your chance delay gratification everybody's going to be a millionaire next week everybody's going to be a millionaire at age 18 but instead they they pander to these idiots I was debating a civil rights lawyer the other day on Sean Hannity, and he said, you know, this movement that's out here talking about killing the cops and, and some of this other ugly stuff, he said, that's a small segment of this Black Lives Matter movement, and we can't let that overshadow the legitimate concerns of the movement. And I said, wait a minute, sir. You're the one, this group is the one that wants to take a small segment of police officers and then you want to turn around and make it as if that is an indictment of the entire profession, but now you don't want us to do that with these idiots that make up this movement. By the way, here's who makes this movement up, this Black Lives Matter. These are anarchists, they're criminals. They're cop haters, they're black racialists, organized laborers in on it, and some Occupy leftovers trying to revitalize their movement. They don't have any legitimate gripes or concerns. And that's why I said we're going to need a citizen-led revolution to counter this ugliness. Are you willing to do it? You've heard me challenge you with that before. Do you have the will? Yes, this is a pitchfork and torches moment. This Black Lives Matter needs to be confronted, engaged, countered. And I don't mean through Facebook postings, postings and Twitter. I believe in Twitter. Matter of fact, you can follow me at Sheriff Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E, on Twitter and thepeoplesheriff.com. But that's not going to be enough. That's a tool available to us. Freedom-loving Americans. It's how we can message, mobilize, spread the word, but that's not enough. At some point, you know, like they say in, in, in war, at some point you have to deploy ground troops. You can't just try to do it through a bombing campaign. At some point, we're, no, we're going to need our own counter-protest movement to show up where these idiots are and even where they, where they aren't and spread our message. Constitution matters. That's really the only thing that matters to me, the Constitution, because without it, we're nothing. 
And we support our police. We support our troops. Black slime, go home. Don't be afraid of being called a racist. You can tell them I said to say that. That's what it is. Filth and garbage that they spew. So, you know, as I indicated, this is a culture war going on right now. And we're losing, we're losing horribly. This didn't just start. Hell, the war on cops has been going on for darn near a year. I think Ferguson happened a year ago, August. Then that steamrolled with no opposition as the mainstream media got, got on board, peddling this lie of hands up, don't shoot. And the politicians got in on the act. And we sat back silently. And what do I mean by silently? I didn't see you in the streets. Yeah, I heard you on Twitter and Facebook and talk radio. But I didn't see you in the streets. This movement only understands one thing, this Black Lives Matter movement. They only understand force. We're going to have to force them from the stage and tell them to go back into the sewers that they came out of. This whole anarchist movement, it's what it is. It's an anarchist movement. They're hiding behind the race issue because they know they can. So we have to win this culture war. Like I said, this didn't just start. Let me take you back a little bit. You know, the language, these things like microaggression, what they're doing in our schools, telling us what's appropriate to say and how to say it. Then it was the gay marriage revolution which was really an assault on the institution of marriage. One of the most time-tested institutions, not in the United States of America, heck, we're only about 270 years old. I'm talking about one of the most time-tested institutions in mankind. Promoted the family unit, order, stability. And we let that one go. Well, it's no big deal. Because, I, like I said, remember, go back to my segment on this gay marriage. It was not about gay marriage, not for me. The way they went about it, the left, when I say they, by the way, assault on our institutions of government, our American institution of marriage. Like I said, we may have gotten there through the states. Remember I took you to slavery? There were free states, there were slave states. We had those debates in the state legislature and then it finally grew to a watershed moment. And then finally the country said, yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of enough. But guess how we did it? after the Civil War, the 13th Amendment. We did it through Article 5 of the United States Constitution, how we amend the Constitution. The Supreme Court cannot amend the Constitution. The Congress might have a role in that but not the Supreme Court, and not the President of the United States. He cannot do it unilaterally. But this is where we're at. David Clark, the People's Sheriff, on the Blaze Radio Network. Jay Severin. What effect? 
Cecil's death has had on the other lions in Africa. And, you know, that's one hell of a fascinating question because it obviously begs another. Do they Twitter or do they Facebook? Jay Severin. Weekdays, 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern. On the Blaze Radio Network. David Clark. The People's Sheriff. Why isn't the Black Lives Matter movement a hate group? I think it is. Why isn't the Southern Poverty Law Center that doesn't have any problem labeling any conservative Republican white group, a hate group, the Tea Party, other people whose views they disagree with ideologically or philosophically, they have no problem labeling them a hate group, yet you have this movement with their vile affiliates who are all claiming to be part of the Black Lives Matter movement, advocating for violence, systematic killing of whites, killing of cops, if things don't change, advocating for bringing down the rule of law. I want you to listen to this, and and I have to uh, warn you, listener, discretion advised, there's some vile language here, so you can get the Young ones out of the room, or if you're of the faint of heart, uh, you may want to walk away just for two minutes and 40 seconds. Listen to this. Until the police ain't there no more. And that's that's when we should act. When the are by themselves, that's when we should start up. Like they do us, when there's a bunch of them taking one of us out, that's how we should roll up. Since we already rolled up in gangs anyway, might as well be six or seven black See that white person and lynch their Let's, let's. Let's turn the table. That's that. I think if we start turning tables and cops, cops start losing people. This be this will be a whole different story. Yeah. Then, it, then, it, then it will be a state of emergency, and there's either two things going to happen: either we're going to have a big arms war, or are going to are they going to start backing up? And uh, and uh, we're already getting killed out here. So what the f- we got to lose? Yep, that's true. That's so. F- we just need to turn the tables on them. Our kids are getting shot out here. Somebody needs somebody needs to become a sacrifice on their side. That's that's just how I feel. Like I said, everybody ain't down for that shit or whatever. But like I said, everybody has a different position in war. We get we need to get down for that shit and do it because they don't give a fuck anyway. So we might as well utilize them for that shit and and turn the tables on these. Shit. So we yeah. can, so we can start looking like we ain't having that many casualties and it'd be more casualties on their side instead of ours because. We out here killing black people. Black lives don't matter. Not to no <laughs> So we got to make it matter to them. But we got to start make, putting more black people per white people. That's what we need. Find a <laughs> that's alone. Snap his ass and then <laughs> hang him from a damn tree. Take a picture of it. Send it to <laughs> us. Better, I bet it'll turn the whole tables on <laughs> We just need We yep. just need one example. One example and people will start watching. Because it's gonna, because it's gonna be a trickle down effect. As soon as one person, as soon as one person gets hung, people are gonna start having an idea to do to us, do that shit some more, and it's gonna become a trickle effect. Black people are good at starting trends. I mean, we just yeah. are. So if one person, so if we get one group of black people to hang one of these racists and let the <laughs> Confederate flag, you know what I'm saying? Let the Confederate flag hang right where they're hanging. This will, this will be a different conversation. We'll not be having a conversation about you. We have a conversation about about how yeah. many how many more yeah. try to tackle us, and we gonna get the upper hand. We need the upper hand. Not just not just, not just one not just one not just one race. We need to make an example out of Nick oh. out of a cop out of a cop that's gonna kill one of us and yeah. get all. That's, yeah. that's 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 how we that make would, this. That would be the best. That would be the best method right there. Listen to that filth. It's amazing. And they're not the only one. That guy's not the only one. That uh, internet radio program is not the only one. There's a group, FYF 911. Stands for F Yo Flag. 
another vile group that depicts on their website pictures of black people, their middle finger extended into the camera, and nothing on naked from the waist down, having a, using a U.S. flag as if it's toilet paper to wipe their rear end. That stuff is filth. Now, that may be protected from government interference under the First Amendment, but that is not protected from everyday citizen interference. We can put it down. We should put it down. There is no place. There is no place in American discourse for that kind of filth. As I said, they're advocating for an overthrow of the American government, the rule of law, unless certain things happen. And this idiot that I just played is advocating for systematically and indiscriminately killing white people and then hanging them, killing cops when they're alone. We saw what happened in Birmingham, Alabama, when a detective was beaten. We saw what just happened in Harris County, Texas, when an officer was ambushed from behind, and then when the guy shot him and knocked him down, he unloaded the magazine into him. Defenseless officer. And this thing is growing. And I'm not going to allow people to get away with saying, well, you can't uh, in indict all of the group. They have some uh, good points. No, they don't. And the reason I say they don't is not because I disagree. They have not made the case. They have not produced the research or the data to suggest any of their claims. None. Zero. And the media won't call them on it. The media is afraid. In part, they're the propaganda machine for this because they advocate for this kind of chaos. Why? Because they attack conservatives and whites and Republicans. But they're also afraid of this group. Well, I'm not. And I finally decided this group needs to be confronted, engaged, put down, call out for what they are, slime, advocating for this garbage. And finally, finally, a presidential candidate spoke up about it, Ted Cruz. Let me read from this. Following the shooting of a sheriff in Houston, Texas, by a black man, as well as chants from Black Lives Matter protesters advocating violence against police, GOP presidential candidate Ted Cruz issued a statement saying he is proud to stand with law enforcement. While campaigning in New Hampshire, Cruz addressed the attacks, both physical and verbal, which have been made against police officers across America. Cruz is calling for leadership to act against this assault on all law enforcement officers in light of the killing of Harris County Deputy Sheriff Darren Goforth, which took place in Cruz's hometown. We, quote, we stand with our police officers, we stand with our firefighters, our EMS, with our first responders. These are brave human beings who risk their lives keeping us safe. We are seeing a manifestation of the rhetoric and vilification of law enforcement that is coming from the top all the way to the President of the United States and senior, senior administration officials. And he went on, and I said, finally, finally, no other presidential candidate on the Republican side wants to touch this. They're afraid. Part of the reason they're afraid, they don't have the vocabulary to talk about race. It gets a little clumsy, and then they say something, you know, it's a little awkward. Those people, some of my best friends, that kind of stuff. And then they get tongue twisted, and then the media, the left-leaning liberal media, pounces on them. And then they spend their time in defense mode, backpedaling, clarifying. That's why they're afraid. You cannot want to contend for the presidency of the United States and be afraid of anything. So when I saw that Ted Cruz finally said what needed to be said from leadership, because we're hearing nothing from President Obama, sure, he issued the obligatory 
you know, my heart goes out to the family of uh, Deputy Go blah, blah, go for blah, blah, blah. He didn't mean that. It took him three days. Finally, he's feeling the heat. People are saying, where is the president on this? How can we have an... And then he begrudgingly, he issues a statement. He couldn't put on the suit and go to the Rose Garden or go to the East Room. He issues a written statement that you know was written by somebody else. This is David Clark, the People's Sheriff, on the Blaze Radio Network. Coming up today on Pat and Stew. It was interesting, though, to see uh, the exact route Jeffy walked on the way to the starting point because you could see it marked by the sweat trail. Uh, it's like, <laughs> cross. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. where Jeffy crossed right there. <laughs> oh, it looked like you stopped there for a minute because there's still a puddle. <laughs> it was uh, it was not pretty. I, have you thought about seeing a physician for, for something what? other than excess pain pills you don't need? Pat and Stu, weekdays at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Blaze Radio Network. You're listening to David Clark, the People's Sheriff. So I'm asking why the Black Lives Matter, or what I have renamed the Black Lies, L-I-E-S, Matters Movement, has not been listed as a domestic terror organization by the United States Department of Justice and Loretta Lynch. There is no problem, no problem in des- investigating law enforcement agencies and taking them over, this federal takeover, for alleged discriminatory practices. No problem indicting law enforcement officers as being bloodthirsty and racist. But now when it comes to something like this with this garbage that's going on, this filth, we're now supposed to just kind of what, stick our heads in the sand? Well, I'm not going to. I am not going to do that. So getting back to Cruz, Finally, one presidential candidate has decided to engage this organization to confront them because they need it. Everyone else is running scared. And I'm going to demand that the people running on the Republican side say something about this, address it. And don't give this mealy mouth dancing around the edges, walking on eggshells. You know, we we all need to to, uh, come together and and our cops are important. No. That's not going to cut it. You must, in very unambiguous language, condemn this garbage. So Cruz goes on to say, cops across the country are feeling the assault. They're feeling the assault from the president, from the top on down, as we see, whether it's in Ferguson or Baltimore, the response of senior officials of the president, of the attorney general, is to vilify law enforcement. This is fundamentally wrong, and it is endangering the safety and security of all of us. Like I said, what happened in Harris County should alarm every American in the United States. This is assault and assault on the American way of life. The law enforcement officer is the guardian of the rule of law. The rule of law is the bedrock of American democracy. No rule of law, no American democracy, no America. He goes on to say, I'm proud to stand with law enforcement, to stand with the police and firefighters and first responders. They're American heroes. They need a president who doesn't attack and vilify them and who doesn't seek to tear us apart along racial lines to inflame racial divisions. Instead, we need a president who works to bring us together and unify us behind shared American values. Thank you, Ted Cruz. Where are the rest of them? Here's another story. Armed Black Panthers to Texas cops. We will start creeping up on you in the darkness. You see what I'm talking about? Why call it black slime? And you can call it that too. And I was asked in several interviews this week on national cable news, both CNN and and Fox News, that you think that's a little strong? Uh, And I said, no, I didn't even hesitate. No, I don't. And I made the case. Listen to what they're saying. They're not walking around saying, we need change, justice for all. They're talking about kill the pigs. 
F the police. They're advocating violence, fear, intimidation, and threats to get the government to act. That's called terrorism. It's the definition of. To use violence, fear, and intimidation to get a government to change. Well, change to what? A state of lawlessness? Anarchy? Remember, I said there was a war on police back in December of 2014. Now the media is starting to use it. and the, But they're just asking, is there a war on police? And my reaction is, if you get your head out of the sand, I know you thought I was going to say something else. I wanted to. And start to observe and listen and be honest with yourself. You will know war has been declared on the American police officer. So how much longer are we going to put up with this? When I say we, I'm talking about you. This thing is just going to get worse. This thing is out of control. And here the, the, the candidates on the Democrat side, Mrs. Bill Clinton, Bernie Sanders, they support this nonsense. Well, this group has some concerns that need to be addressed and, and they need to be listened to. No, they don't. They need to be exiled from American discourse. I didn't say society. Discourse. You don't get to participate. Not with that garbage. Get it out of here. Go underground. Go back to your sewers and operate anonymously. I mean, these people are putting their faces and names and everything out. This is how, when I said the president breathed life into this organization, this movement, this is what I mean. This used to go on underground. Like every other anarchist movement had to go underground. You know, Bill Ayers and the Weathermen, underground. If the KKK, if the Aryan nation was talking like this, lynching and killing indiscriminately black people and hanging them? Do you know what the reaction would be from America at large, and rightfully so? Get out of town. There would be no ambiguity. We would be speaking with one voice. The Democrats would be saying there's no place in American discourse for this. And rightfully so, there isn't. That's gone. It day's over. But it's been revived with this movement. And the president, he's been fanning the flames the entire time. He knows exactly what he's doing. This is right out of Saul Alinsky. Chaos. Create division. Get people scared. Intimidate. Fear and intimidation are tactics. The anarchist movement. And then we sit around and we, we kind of like, you know, we issue tweets and we go on Facebook and, and, and we say some nice things. And that's fine. There's a place for social media, but as I said earlier, that's only going to get us so far. At some point, we are going to have to stage counter protests. Why? Because it works and it lets the other side know that we are ready for the fight. I had Alan Combs ask me in an interview this week, well, sure, if you're not uh, advocating for um, you know, physical confrontation, I said, no, peaceful protest. I use their language, right? That's what this movement says, well, you know, peaceful protest. Have the vocabulary ready. No, I'm not advocating for physical violence. I'm advocating for peaceful protest. But guess what? If while we're peaceful protesting, they incite physical confrontation, <laughs> yeah, then the fight is on. Because I'm ready for it. I'm not backing down. And you can't either, because you are my fighting force. And I need you. I'll do the fighting message-wise. And I'll be front and center with the fight, but I need you to cover my flanks. You aren't just going to be able to get it done on Twitter and Facebook.
That's how we communicate nationwide to get the message out. Here's the plan of attack. Here's what we need. Here's where we're going to be. It's effective for that. We're in the middle of the fight for America. I don't know that we've woken up yet. I don't know if we realize that the fight, they've already started the fight. The fighting has started. Get your pitches, your, 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 your torches and pitchforks, and let's engage. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next Saturday. God bless you. This is David Clark.